The latest LEGO update is here. Mechanical Mayhem adds vehicles at last. Proper steering and functionality to build three different types of vehicles with very much different strengths and weaknesses. I'm going to go through that today. I live streamed it and here's the shortened version of what I ended up making and building. So there are three different pre-built vehicles that you can use, a speedster, off-roader and massive truck. You can of course make your own creations and different types of vehicles, but if you want to go off something already built, then this is the easiest way to create from the blueprint. The off-roader, despite its name, isn't that great. I would say it's actually the worst of the three vehicles if you're going to be using these pre-built ones. It's not particularly powerful, it has trouble getting up hills, but it does offer four seats straight off the bat so you and your friends can roll around the world. It's not particularly fast either, but of course that's where you get into putting your own thrusters and I'm gonna show you how to do that too. To unlock this bad boy, you do need to pick up some flex wood, usually found in the desert. This and the large hauler will be available and ready as soon as you picked up the right resources. The hauler, you need the frost pine wood that you find in the snow biomes. The speedster car, it does rely on the power energy cells that you're gonna to have to craft, which of course I'm gonna go over. There are special car lifts now that support the car so you can customize and add more underneath it if you want to. You are gonna need a lot of wood, a lot of flex wood, and a lot of regular stone as well. Also some torches as you're going to need to go ahead and make lamps for the car and you're also going to need glass. The flex wood is used a lot for the fenders as well as needing a lot of the flex wood to make some of the wheels. A good handful of rods as well. I'm not really going to list off exactly every resource that you need but you get the idea. By this stage you should hopefully have a good supply of rods, plain wood and things like grass fibres. Now the power center does come in three different sizes and you can see it's made out of stone and some of the fiber rope. There are different types of wheels that you can place but obviously with this pre-built you need to place them exactly right but you just got basically medium powered wheels and you've got small and large and then you'll also have ones that are turnable. So obviously you want the turnable ones at the front if you want front wheel drive or you could try it rear wheel drive as well and you can change the direction of tires once they're placed by just by going over to it and pressing the right button. To make the glass, you will need to put obviously sand in a smelter with some of the bright core that you get from the desert caves. So just go and use a shovel in the desert and you get loads of sand that way. It's a two to one ratio, so you will need a lot more sand. And here's where we jump to the compost bin. This is vital as we're gonna need the biomass from this to go ahead and make our batteries. So you can make three different items here. You can make soil, you can make fertilizer, and you can make biomass. Certain things will only give you maybe soil or the fertilizer. If you want a guaranteed chance of getting the biomass needed, bones and meat are probably some of the best things. By now, hopefully you've got chests full of bones left lying around with nothing left to spend them on. Don't use things like feathers as that's going to give you just either soil or the fertilizer. You can also put cooked meats as well. Any prepared foods and stuff like that, you can also just chuck in, including raw veg. It does take quite a while to go through, so you might want to put two or three of them down. And you can see that I've picked up now 10 pieces of biomass as well as some um, soil. This unlocks the power cell. So this is what you're going to be using to power your vehicles. You'll need additional glass to make it as well as you can see here and that biomass. In fact, it's six glass and I do believe 50 biomass. So you do need to put quite a lot of foods, meats and bones in it to get a lot. It took quite a while, but eventually I got enough and I realized that bones were gonna give me a decent amount. Bones also do give you fertilizer and soil as well as the biomass, but definitely a good amount. It does look like meat is gonna be the best one for giving you just pure biomass. And you can go ahead and use a fish as well. Last top tip, apparently if you haven't got glass yet for some reason, maybe you've not got bright core, you can apparently get glass as a reward drop from bandits in certain camps. And that's it, once you've got the power cell, you can go ahead and place it in the engine and you will be able to now drive it off. You'll see three numbers at the bottom right. These are basically your triggers to activate things like thrusters, balloons, or whatever else contraptions you're making. The off-roader can hold two power cells, but you only need one to actually get going, and that's the same for some of the other vehicles like the hauler as well. 
As you might imagine, RT to go forward, LT to reverse, exit out using the X button, and of course, steering. Now you've got them three buttons, as I said, you can connect these using a wrench, a switch, two thrusters, which I'm gonna show you guys, and it's how you can get a bit more speed. Now you can do damage against things, you can run over trees, bushes, and rocks with your car, but weirdly, it doesn't do any damage to enemies. You'll simply either go straight through them or some cases you might pick up some live cattle into the compartment with you and they're pretty destructible i found that i easily damaged the hauler so do be on the lookout for big things that might get in the way and make sure you're clearing out any fences so you've got plenty of room to drive around so it is drivable without adding any extra thrusters or messing around with anything else. But like I said, it's pretty slow going and wouldn't say it's the fastest thing. Going downhill, you will gather a bit more speed and obviously it is good for transport, maybe four players at a time. But yeah, without a thruster, it's a bit useless. So how do we make it really good? Then like I said, put some thrusters on it. Obviously you should have the recipes for these by now. Hopefully you've been gathering lots of the TNT Dynamite too and just place a couple on the back. You can still add more build pieces to it as well. Seems like the heavier it is with the right kind of wheels, you can gain a lot more traction getting up certain inclines. Once you place a couple of thrusters, you can then go ahead and put your activation switch on. And this can be placed absolutely anywhere. You don't need to have it near the driving wheel as you will be able to use the quick buttons to go ahead and use the thrusters. Now you will need the brand new wrench. That's got to be crafted at a crafting station. And then you can go ahead and mess around with the channels. And that's what these numbers are. So by disconnecting channel two and channel three, and then making sure the thrusters are on channel one, that's how I activate them two thrusters. If you're building an airship, then you would connect channel two to thrusters going in a different direction and channel three likewise to other thrusters or maybe larger ones in another direction. And then when you're ready to go, simply press the thruster button, the Y here, and look, bam, this is what I've been waiting for. It was really silly that so much of the driving and vehicles people were making couldn't really be controlled properly well, it was a lot of effort and it just wasn't worth it since the vehicles would often break quite easily. But now it really is definitely probably the best update they could have done, adding functionality to it. It does stop after a while just like normal thrusters, but again, it only needs a few seconds to cool down and you can go ahead and use them once more. And this is how I picked up my cow friend here. So as I said, you can free build whatever kind of vehicles you want. You don't have to be limited to the free designs they give you, but obviously I was just showing off some of the stuff that you might need. You've got different size driving chairs, lots of different suspension, as well as different car jacks for different sizes, and of course, bigger wheels. It does have to be the steering wheels or the special new wheels rather than just simple wheels, otherwise you won't necessarily be able to use the wrench and use them to power and drive. So the speed start is pretty much the same deal. There's not many stages to make sure it's complete, and you've got a really cool little one person little wagon. I found this vehicle actually much better to drive getting up hills and stuff and despite it being smaller it just felt like the off-roader should have been maybe the vehicle that you could use across different terrains and up hills a little bit better but yeah this one was pretty speedy pretty nippy and absolutely definitely worth it put a thruster on this and you will absolutely be speeding around the hauler did take a lot more materials you are going to need a ton more stone lots and lots of wood and again you're still going to need things like glass and lots of frost pine as well as flex wood but honestly this is my favorite vehicle and i didn't expect that to be the case it's so large but it's also quite powerful with the six wheels that it's got it definitely had a quite more speed than i thought it would and you could build all sorts of this you could build a base you could make it even bigger i want to test it out more to see if there's any limitations does it make it really slow if you start putting stuff on top of it it obviously had a larger engine, but with the six wheels, it seemed to go up hills a lot easier, and it was just loads of fun, despite a little bit of server lag. But yeah, they're fragile little things. It only took a couple of hits into a wall, and I started losing things like my little staircase up to the top of the vehicle and some of my fenders. And just remember, if the hall is not appearing, you do need to pick up some of the frost pine before you could go ahead and craft and make it. Some other tidbits you might want to know, you can get a brand new thermal light by collecting a thermal fish or swimming in certain fish waters. There's much better transferring of items now where you can transfer similar items to and fro from storage. And as usual, a bunch more characters and skins to unlock. Although there is still no new kits for this and I'm kind of glad after how expensive some of the build kits were. I'm expecting though for that to appear in the future, getting more designs for vehicles that are going to be outrageously priced. 
Is this enough to get you back into LEGO Fortnite? It nearly is for me. I might mess around a little bit in creative mode and see what kind of mad stuff I can create. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you are going to be jumping back into LEGO Fortnite. And I'll see you right back for more guides news soon. Bye-bye.